Hi, my name is Tristan Ursell. I'm a fifth year graduate student in the Applied Physics Department at Caltech. Part of my research concentrates on how proteins, which alter the surface features of a lipid bilayer, interact with each other. To emulate this on a macroscopic scale, I've created two kinds of particles, hydrophilic particles, which are shown in blue, and hydrophobic particles that are shown in white. The hydrophobic particles depress the water surface away from the camera, whereas the hydrophilic particles pull the water surface towards the camera. Before I demonstrate some of the interactions these particles can have, I need to mention that a crucial shortcoming of this demonstration is a lack of a macroscopic analog to temperature. On the molecular level, fluctuations due to temperature would cause random motion and allow the particles to explore all possible spatial orientations. For now, my hand will have to serve as that temperature. All of the interactions you'll see during this demonstration are manifestations of the system's desire to minimize surface energy and hence surface area. Each of the two different kinds of particles tends to deform the water surface, adding area. The particles will adopt any spatial configuration they can, which will minimize the surface area. The first and arguably the simplest case to explore is that of two identical hydrophobic particles. As I place each of the two particles in the water, you'll notice a small bright spot appears below each particle. That's a reflection from the depressed water surface. Right away, the two particles begin to attract in an effort to minimize surface area. A small fluctuation, in this case provided by my hand, can indeed break the two particles up, but given the finite length of this attraction, they will again find each other. The next case we'll consider is nearly identical to the previous case, except that these two particles now pull the water in the opposite direction. As such, you'll see that the small bright spot that was previously on the bottom is now on the top. Again, the two particles strongly attract each other, and a fluctuation provided by my hand can break them up. Now we're going to put one hydrophobic particle and one hydrophilic particle in the same area. This might be the first case where you see something that's not too intuitive. You'll notice right away that they act like billiard balls smacking off each other, but they don't actually ever touch. That's because there's this repulsive potential between them. In the two previous examples, there's no preference for a particular orientation between the particles. However, if we take one of those hydrophobic circles, cut it exactly in half, and make two half-circled particles, this is going to introduce a preference into the system where the particles will want to align. As the two particles attract, their circular sides align. However, this attraction is not particularly strong. And as I break them apart, you'll notice that when they come together again to form a circle, that bond will be much stronger. An interesting outcome of this orientational degree of freedom is that particles of different shapes will want to align to form various structures. What I've done here is further cut those half circles into quarter circles. What I'll do now is push these particles together with my hand to encourage them to form one of these structures. This is going to be a small 2D filament. Now what we'll do is use force to change the hydrophilicity of a hydrophilic particle. If I push down on the particle, it changes its nature from being hydrophilic to hydrophobic. Notice at first, when I don't apply any force, just push around the particles, they do repel each other as before. When I push down, there's a strong attraction. I can augment this attraction, pop the particle in and out, just by changing the amount of force I apply to the hydrophilic particle. Now what I'll do is I'll introduce another hydrophilic particle. So initially these two will attract, and when I push down, they just start repelling each other. Now 
If I apply just the right amount of force, I can have the particles sit at a fixed distance from each other, as shown here. The last thing I'll try to do is use a bunch of hydrophilic particles to enclose a hydrophobic particle. As we already know, hydrophobic and hydrophilic particles repel each other. So I should be able to confine the particle without actually touching it. After successfully enclosing the hydrophobic particle, you'll notice it now dances around in a confining potential created by the surrounding hydrophilic particles.